Nico Robin's story is the most important story in all of One Piece. Her story touches on heavy topics such as existentialism and nihilism. It forces you to ask questions such as what does it mean to live or why should one want to live or what makes someone even worthy of living. Her story sends a message about how to find your will to live and I think that's something we should all think about at one point in our life. Through the character of Robin, Oda shows how someone can transition from a life of nihilistic dread to one of positive existentialism. As always, before we break down the philosophy of Nico Robin, we have to look at her background get a better understanding of her character. Without further ado, a decoy that's almost cute. Robin was born on the island of Ohara and came from a family of archaeologists. Her mother, Nico Olivia, left Robin in the care of her brother and his wife while she went out to sea to find the true history in honor of her husband's dream. Robin was abused verbally and physically at home and told repeatedly that she was not wanted. She was outcasted and called a demon by other kids and adults for having a devil fruit ability. The only friends Robin had were the scholars at the Tree of Knowledge. At a young age, she aced an archaeology exam and was inducted as a scholar. When she announced that she wanted to follow in her mother's footsteps and find a true history of the world, she was told that she would be banned from the library if she continued that type of research. Robin ran away crying and ran into and befriended the giant jaguar D. Soul. After realizing he was on O'Hara and that Robin was Olivia's daughter, he warned her that battleships were coming to destroy O'Hara because of the scholars' research and studying the Poneglyphs and the lost history. Olivia escaped the marines and warned the scholars on O'Hara of the attack. However, they refused to leave and try saving as many of the library's books as possible. When CP9 arrived and found the Poneglyph, they ordered the archaeologists to death by Buster Call. Robin's home of O'Hara was destroyed in the attack and she lost all her friends and family and was forced to live on the run. Saul's last words to Robin were that someday on the sea Robin will find friends that will protect her and she won't be alone. After escaping the destruction of O'Hara, Robin had a bounty set on her and was labeled the demon of O'Hara by the world government. They lied to the public that the scholars of O'Hara were trying to find the ancient weapons to destroy the world which forced her to live a life of solitude. Every time she tried to get close to someone they tried to turn her in or kill her. During her 20 years on the run, she joined the Baroque Works organization run by the warlord Crocodile. It was later revealed that Crocodile was only using her to read the Poneglyph in Alabasta so he could locate the ancient weapon Pluton. After Robin was injured by Crocodile, Luffy saved her even though she told him she didn't want to be saved because she had no reason to live. She decided to join the Straw Hats because Luffy saved her when she had no will to live, so she told him he should take responsibility for her. The crew traveled to a few islands and everything seemed like it was going smoothly until they arrived in Water 7. Robin ran into CP9, a group of assassins from the world government, and began carrying out violent tasks with them. When the crew caught up with her, she refused to go back with them because she said she wouldn't be able to accomplish her wish. Robin was taken to Ennis Lobby by CP9, where the Straw Hats followed and began a raid on the government island. When she saw the Straw Hats in Ennis Lobby, she told them she didn't want to be saved. She revealed that her fears were that they would abandon her because it's dangerous to be close to her. In response, Luffy told Soldier King to shoot down the world government's flag, essentially declaring war against the world government for her. This was Luffy showing Robin that the crew would never abandon her no matter who her enemy was. Luffy also encouraged Robin to say one more thing, which led to one of the most beautiful scenes in all of anime. その存在そのものが滞在なんだ。アメン。望んでいけないことだと思ってた。誰もそれを許してくれなかった。海は広いんだで、いつか必ずお前を守ってくれる仲間が現れる。
Nihilism has always existed in one way or another, but was popularized and is usually associated with Friedrich Nietzsche. He believed that existence was meaningless as well as moral codes were worthless because they were not grounded in reality. Robin's whole life she was outcasted and told that her life was a crime and that her existence was a sin. Naturally, she developed a nihilistic view of the world, which makes sense why she would do things like join criminal organizations such as Baroque works because she was living what felt like a meaningless existence. Even though Robin had a dream, her nihilistic view of the world made her feel like she wasn't worthy of living out that dream. A big part of nihilism is being disconnected from the world and reality as a whole. Robin, having been on the run for 20 years after the destruction of O'Hara, left her with no place or people to call home. Her lack of connection to the world is the reason she pushed the straw hats away when they chased her in Water 7 at Ennis Lobby. She felt like her existence alone brought nothing but pain to those around her, which is why she was always alone and couldn't keep people around her. This is why she tells the straw hats that they will for sure abandon her one day because she believes her life is a burden on others. 20年前私からすべてを奪い大勢の人たちの人生を狂わせたたった一度の攻撃バスターコールその攻撃がやっと出会えた気を許せる仲間たちに向けられた私があなたたちと一緒にいたいと望めば望むほど私の運命があなたた